खुफिया वीडियो देखने से पहले वीडियो को लाइक करें रहम टीवी चैनल को सब्सक्राइब करें और बेल आइकन पर क्लिक करें शुक्रिया बिस्मिल्लाबाद थे इज माई टॉपिक ऑन कराम एंड आई वुड लाइक टू क्लैरिफाई वन ऑब्जेक्शन वन मिस अंडरस्टैंडिंग दैट कीप्स रोटेटिंग ऑन सोशल मीडिया एंड पीपल हु डू नॉट बिलीव इन द वर्क ऑफ दफ एंड कराम and they say that why do aulia why, why do sufia talk about aulia or their karamat you know karamat are supernatural and unusual things that take place in the on the hands of the aulia and siddiqin why do they and why and whereas they don't even have any chain of narrations ko sanad bhi nahi hoti uski there is no sanad like there is for the ahadith that in the books famous books of ahadith namely sahih al bukhari or muslim sharif there is the sanad that i heard it from him and he heard it from him and he heard it from him and qala qala rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam kada wa kada so in those uh, ways there is no such chain of narrations so the authenticity of a hadith is well known and a hadith are full of the uswa of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam the life events of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam the life events of the sahaba which are confirmed in the very authentic in such famous books so why there is a need of narrating the karamat of awliya when there is no chain of narrations for that right and then why do the sufia prefer why do they even prefer those stories over the stories of sahaba so this was the question that was clarified by our hazrat ji in his program kashkol e marifat and i would just like to reiterate that so first off we have to understand what is this karamat right what is this karamat and how does it even take place it starts with building your heart for it it just not happens it just not happens all of a sudden you're going to wake up and you're going to do something on supernatural this has to do with a lot of hard work goes into it you have to work on your heart clear your heart with all kinds of desires you do not have any connection any desire or any want any wish of your own except for the wish of allah subhanahu wa taala because according to the sufia the shirk is not only you have to do the shirk of you do the worshiping of the idols the worship of the idols is not the only shirk in the sufia according to the sufia if you have any other want besides allah subhanahu wa taala that too is a category of shirk this is the category of shirk in the sufia so when their definitions of shirk are so strict they try to clear their hearts with anything that has to do with the makhluk to a level their hearts are smashed they are broken they are broken hearts and then allah subhanahu wa taala says ana ind al maksurat al qulubuhum that i am with the broken hearts the hearts that are broken in my way that's where allah subhanahu wa taala resides so they spend their days and nights worshiping allah subhanahu wa taala not only sticking to the faraid and wajibat but doing nawafil and then a time comes in their life that allah subhanahu wa taala says in in a hadith in a hadith qudsi that a person draws near to me through nawafil and he does so much and so much that eventually i become his hands with which he holds i become his legs with which he walks i become his eyes with which he sees i lick, become his so allah subhanahu wa taala names the organs of this person that this is what i become and they are utilized in my desires in my afal so when these hearts are smashed there is no other desires that le- are left and with the nawafil they draw so close to allah subhanahu wa taala then one day their hearts become the vessels to hold the knowledge of allah subhanahu wa taala their hearts become a container and a space for the irada of allah subhanahu wa taala for the wishes of allah subhanahu wa taala to take place for the actions of allah subhanahu wa taala so his heart become the manifestations of the actions of allah subhanahu wa taala and that's when you start seeing the miracles that's what the miracles are so apparently those miracles are ascribed to this person in a way that people look at him and think that these supernatural activities he is the doer of the activities but he is not the doer allah is doing it it is that allah has selected his heart and his action and his hands and his organs to manifest his own actions this is what happens if it is happens on the hands of the uh, of the anbiya ali musalam then this become the mujizat right and if it happens on the hands of the awliya kamilin who have struggled all through their lives and one day this happens to their heart and their hands this is called karamat 
So these are the actions of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So one thing you have to always know, these are the actions of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then the hearts and the organs of these awliya is chosen by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to manifest his actions, to manifest his ilam. To manifest. So when they speak, they speak, then Allah says that I become their tongue. So when it is, Allah speaks with that tongue. So why would he not talk wonders? If it is Allah's hands, if Allah says that this is his hands, but I am the one who holds, I hold. So why would it not do wonders? Why the legs wouldn't do wonders? It would do wonders, right? So the problem happens when you start comparing that with anything other, uh, any other discipline. When you talk about the ahadith, ahadith is a different discipline than the tazkiyatul qalb. Karamat is the result of tazkiyatul qalb. And ahadith and the tafsir of the Quran is the discipline of knowledge and study. Right? So when you compare the two, that's when these confusions would arise. And people would say there is no chain of narrations. Then what do you mean by chain of narrations? Right? When you say that it, this hadith is in Sahih al-Bukhari, as Hazaji said, you are putting your trust on Imam al-Bukhari, that Imam Bukhari is a man of his words. He does not lie. He's a truthful man. And, from, and you have the life events of Imam al-Bukhari where you see that his pious life. You put your 100% trust on Imam Bukhari. And then you say, if he says that Fulan said, and then he said, and then he said, and then Rasulullah sallallahu said, kada wa kada, we accept it. So you basically do not accept the sanad. Sanad were written. These are just written forms of the same thing that you have your trust that you have put on Imam Bukhari. Right? So it comes to trusting on one person, Imam al-Bukhari. So if you put the same trust on Awliya Allah, all these pious people of Allah, like Abdul Qadir Jilani rahimahumullah ta'ala, when he talks about the, uh, the karamat that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has shown, so your trust could, if it could be on Imam al-Bukhari, why can't on, uh, on be on uh, Pirani Pir Abdul Qadir Jilani rahimahumullah ta'ala? And there are so many other uh, awliya kamilin on whose hands Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has manifested his actions. So, the chain of narrations has no reality if there is no trust. If you are not to trust, you cannot trust the Holy Quran. This is a beautiful example Hazaji gave that for every ayat of the Quran that was revealed, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa had said, this is Qur'an, right? Because Qur'an, the, the difference between Qur'an and Hadith is only one thing that Prophet sallallahu had to say, this is Qur'an. If otherwise, both types of statements came, came from the blessed face, uh, mouth of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa There is no differentiation. If he never said this is Qur'an, then nobody would know it is Qur'an. For every ayat of the Qur'an, there has to be a statement from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa saying that this is Qur'an, right? But where are those statements? Imam Bukhari hasn't mentioned that. Imam Muslim hasn't mentioned it. No muhaddis has mentioned it. Right? It is the trust that you have on your teacher because he says that I heard it from my teacher and he heard it from his teacher and all the way to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that this is Quran that you have to believe it. Right? And then Hazaji also says that it is not about chain of narrations. You cannot make somebody believe based on the chain of narrations. Today people do not even believe in the ahadith. Right? To you, Imam Bukhari is a man of his words and he's a truthful man and you believe that these are the words of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa the ones he has collected in Sayyid Bukhari, same way in Sayyid Muslim and other books of hadith. But there are so many people who are munkari in hadith. They do not believe that this is the hadith. Right? So you cannot make anybody believe. And then, what is the purpose? Then the question is, what is the purpose of mentioning these karamat? What is the purpose of mentioning the karamat? The purpose of mentioning the karamat is because you see the results and you get motivated when you see the results. See, if you pray every day, right, and then if you, if you pray every day and then you see some results after a few days, things improving, right, and then you have that desire to uh, and you get attracted to the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you get attracted to the prayers. And that happens, you right? know, when you start your tahajjud salah, when you start something new in your life, you start it as God, it enlightens your heart. If you did not see any movement in your heart, 14 workshops have passed, you really think you're going to come for the 15th? You're not going to come. Right? Because it does not, you see the hearts, you don't see the hearts moving. In the same way, these awliya, they exercised those 
uh, uh, so those uh, practices which cleanse their hearts and they direct their, their attention only towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as a result of which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shown the those karama those supernatural activities on their hands now a person like me and you feel attracted if he can do it I can do it too I might not be perfect but I can try if this can happen to him but just by putting a trust on Allah he can attain such and such levels why can I not try it right so it brings motivation and for the same reason Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam would talk about the people of the past that there was a person uh, three people who got uh, who got trapped in a in a mountain cave and then they, one of them said that I, if I did such and such, if I did it for the sake of Allah, oh Allah, re relieve me from this trouble. And then the stone moved a bit, and then the stone moved another bit, and then it moved another bit, and they all escaped. Right? So Rasulullah sallallahu himself, Rasulullah sallallahu he did not only limit his teachings to the teachings of the prophets and only teachings to the teachings of the Quran, but he related the stories of the people of the times where they have done certain actions for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they saw such beautiful results. So this brings motivations. And that's why even the Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Musa alayhi wa right? he would talk to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who is a pious person, who would be my neighbor on the day of judgment, who would be my neighbor in the Jannah. All these questions were asked so that people will learn from his actions that if you do such and such actions you could become a neighbor to a prophet like Musa alayhi salam right so these brings motivations that's why Sufia would narrate the stories of the awliya and they would mention their karamat so that it brings attraction it brings motivation it brings motivation and then uh, one uh, last uh, thing they said was uh, ob one of the objections was that they prefer they prefer the 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 karamat -e awliya or the stories of the awliya over the sahaba and the rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and that is not true hazaji has denied that this is not true at all that awliya no ma and this is our aqidah that all the awliya together all the awliya together right they can be on one side but one subhanallah of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam or the amal of any sahabi of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam would overweigh the the lifetime events and the lifetime amal of the of the awliya kamili and this is our aqidah so how do we prefer we talk about uh, uh, sahaba radiyallahu anhum ajma'in many times hayatul sahaba is a beautiful example people talk about the lives of sahaba all the time and sahaba are what nothing but awliya right they are not nabi if they are not nabi and them closing to a close to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is nothing but being an awali of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so we always talk about awliya of starting from sahaba radiyallahu anhum ajma'in and then the awliya that came afterwards right and the one of the most uh, the one of the basic reason for which this type of confusion arise is that they started comparing they start comparing and weighing the karamat and the mojizat. They say this type of mojizat did not happen on the hands of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. How Piran Epir can can uh, travel such a long distance in a moment of time, whereas it took uh, Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam so many days to go from Makkah to Medina. These are the questions they would bring up. You know, the Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. There, you know, there is a karamat of tayul ard. So these type of actions did not took place even in the life of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam. How did it take place in the time of Pirani Pir or in the hands of such and such wali? So this cannot be true. First of this comparison is Bayadbi. As Azizji said, this is the Bayadbi. How can you compare Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam with the awliya when they have no, uh, they, they are the servants. They are, they are the, um, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam is the master and they are the subordinates of Rasulullah. So they take from the nur of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam and they show the light which was given to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Right? You compare apples to apples. You, you do not compare awliya with Rasulullah. You compare awliya within themselves. And they are karamat within themselves. And when you were to compare the prophets, then compare Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam with other prophets. This would be the right thing to do. You, if you compare Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam with Musa alayhi salam, that would be a right thing to do. And if you compare Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam with his servant, with his subordinate, with his slave, so that comparison, comparison itself is a bad be. It's an act of disrespect, right? And what do you think? How are you to weigh what is big and what is small? What is big and what is small? Who, who are you to find out, right? There was a time that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam, in a moment of time, in a very short moment of time, he pra traveled from one sanctuary to the other sanctuary, from Masjid al-Haram to the Masjid al-Aqsa, and from Masjid al-Aqsa to the Arsh of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala came back, and it was only a short moment of night. So what about that? 
right? And that there has been times when Rasulullah, when Allah's wisdom ha was that he would take two weeks to go from Makkah to Medina and he would, uh, he would endure all the burdens and the hardships of the way, right? So this is the wisdom of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we are nobody to weigh. Well, it is, the, again, like I said, these are the actions of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala manifested on the wali, right? This is not his own actions. Once you understand that these are the actions of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala manifested, uh, manifested in the life of the prophets, then, and this is the same actions on the hands of the wali, then you would not have these uh, confusions because this is the action of Allah. If you don't like it, ask him. <laughs> so if you don't like him, then ask him. I just remember, you know, our Dada Peer Hazrat, Mona Yusuf Ludhyanvi Shaheed Rahmatullah I used to attend his Jummah Khutbas. As I said this, it reminded me of him that, you know, one time somebody would send a question and he said, why? I don't even remember the question exactly, but I remember his answer. <laughs> so if you don't like it, then ask him. So again, the, the, the mojzat and karamat are the actions of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and it takes a lot of effort and sacrifices. It's not easy. It's not easy. And the people who have objections and misunderstanding, they're so low. It's so funny when you talk about, see these videos on, on YouTube and other social media and you see them, they're way too low and these awliya are way above you. Their hearts are so clean, they don't have a desire of themselves anymore. Their hearts are smashed, there's nothing in it, right? This is a broken vessel where it does not hold the clean water or a bad water. A, a muddy water would not hold just like a clean water would not hold. So that type of practice your heart has to take and then one day Allah would decide to do that put the noor. Then the calmness of the heart is going to come. Brownness of the mind is going to come. Shining of the face is going to come. All these things are going to happen, but first you have to break your heart. Right? So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us tawfiq and give us the understanding of these lives of awliya and the karamat. Wa akhru da'wana alhamdulillah rabbil alameen.